Welcome to Pat's Cast. I'm Brad Whitaker. The New England Patriots have officially named Gerard Mayo as the next head coach. The announcement came just moments ago. Comes about 24 hours after the parting of ways with Bill Belichick and the organization. And uh, look, Mayo, everything everyone says about Mayo that's worked with him says he is one of the smartest minds in the NFL. Uh, he has a very high IQ, obviously knows his stuff. He has spent his whole career with the Patriots organization, obviously as a player, and then working under Bill Belichick the last few years uh, as the linebackers coach and basically the de facto defensive coordinator. However, he has not been the one calling plays. That has been Steve Belichick. But for the most part, Gerard Mayo has been the one leading that defense, uh, leading team meetings, putting together the scheme. Uh, Robert, Robert Kraft made it made it real open last offseason that he wanted Gerard Mayo to be the successor to Bill and we ended up finding out last night that Mayo had a clause in his contract saying uh, he could replace Bill Belichick as head coach without any interviews happening or the Patriots having to go through the Rooney rule which requires them to interview at least two minority candidates they could just promote Gerard Mayo right away which is what they've decided to do now what I find really interesting about this is about six weeks ago roughly we found out that the Patriots were going to move on from Bill Belichick it was a report that came out from Tommy Curran uh, with NBC Sports Boston and Curran really put his job on the line there uh, because you don't just report that unless you have a source, unless you have real concrete information saying that this is what is going to happen. And Curran was ultimately proved correct on Thursday. Now, I thought that might have changed a little bit in terms of the equation once the Patriots started winning some games, once we found out Bill was open to potentially giving up his general managing duties and just focusing on coaching the team. But Robert Kraft made it clear in the press conference on Thursday that, you know, you you don't promote somebody and give, give them power in an organization and then start to take it away because there's accountability issues there. It shows that you don't trust them. And from a business point, I, I understand that it's really hard to give someone power and then take it away because ultimately you're saying they're not doing a good enough job and it's 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 only going to be a matter of time before they have to move on from you because that trust has been broken so it made sense that that crap did not want to go that route but what i do find interesting is when the news leaked that belichick was going to be gone at the end of the season basically halfway through the season a little more than halfway who gave Tom Curran that information? It had to be Gerard Mayo, right? Because if you think about it, Gerard Mayo and Tom Curran, they're, they're very good friends. They, they worked together at NBC Sports Boston on the show Quick Slants. They did that for a few years, I think beginning in 2016, shortly after Mayo retired. Mayo did a great job in that role, and eventually he, he found a role on the coaching staff, really impressed people, and that's where he is right now. But... Somebody probably told him, Robert Kraft, hey, we're going to move on from Bill and you're going to be the guy at the end of this offseason. And Mayo potentially, look, I'm speculating here. I, I, I don't have the information, but if you're connecting the dots, this seems to be what probably happened. Mayo leaked it to his buddy Tom Curran. Tom Curran ran with the story, which was ultimately proved correct because he would not do that. I don't blame Curran for doing that. If you get that information as a reporter, you're going to report that, and he was ultimately proved correct. And then we found out Thursday after Bill Belichick's parting of ways, let's be honest, it was a firing, okay? It was a firing. That was a PR thing. They did a good job at, at, at uh, of celebrating Belichick. I think as a Patriots fan, that was the best case scenario of how Bill will leave. But Robert Kraft clearly wanted to move on after the Colts game in Germany. So we find out basically minutes after that happened, Tom Curran's going on NBC Sports Boston. He's going on WEI. He's going on his podcast. And he says, all indications are saying Gerard Mayo is going to be the head coach. And it's going, uh, didn't Mike Vrabel change that equation a little bit? Don't you want to at least interview him? You know, people around the league, many have said Mike Vrabel is a top five NFL coach. And 
Obviously, he has a background with the Patriots. He has experience being a head coach. He was not in charge of player personnel, which ultimately I think led to his downfall. But they were a playoff team for multiple seasons. He hired great offensive coordinators, uh, 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 Matt LaFleur and Art Smith, who ultimately left to become head coaches. Vrabel seemed like the, an obvious choice, the, the most qualified candidate. Don't you at least, even if you're leaning toward Gerard Mayo, don't you want to open up the interview process, interview Gerard, interview Vrabel? As I suggested, interview Mike Bieniemy, who's probably the smartest offensive mind around the NFL that may be available to be a head coach as of right now. And, you know, you could bring in Brian Flores, you could bring in Josh McDaniels, Ben Johnson, get a little bit of clarity that Gerard Mayo is exactly what you want to do. Well, then we find out late Thursday night, Ian Rappaport comes out saying, Gerard Mayo has a clause in his contract saying, they can elevate him to head coach at any time. That's something they would have had to run by the league this past offseason, uh, before the 2023 season, um, to get approved. Because the, otherwise, they would have to go through a formal uh, head coaching interview process. They would have to uh, uh, follow the Rooney rule. And obviously, Gerard Mayo fulfills that. If you bring in the enemy, then you have two minority candidates, and, and, and that would be fine. But they were able to shortcut that entire process because they ran it by the league, which is interesting because Belichick would have had to sign off on that because they gave Belichick a two-year extension heading into the 2023 season, expecting, hey, he will coach for two more years. The Patriots will be at least the 500 team. Belichick will break Shula's record and either go coach somewhere else or walk off into the sunset and then Gerard Mayo has a little more experience we're ready to elevate him to the head coaching position that timeline was sped up drastically because the Patriots only won four wins but what bothers me a little bit about this is that Gerard Mayo is in the position he is in now because of Bill Belichick because Belichick drafted him because he took on a leadership role embracing the Patriot way under Bill Belichick Belichick signed him <clears throat> excuse me, made him linebackers coach, and Mayo essentially leaked this potentially. Again, this is not confirmed. Tom Curran is a reporter. He will never confirm his sources. That's what reporters do uh, for good reason. But if that is what happened, Mayo really did undercut Belichick, and he really didn't have to there at the end. Maybe he just wanted to put the final nail in the coffin and say, well, Look, they think Bill's on the way out, but I know Belichick. This team's going to rally. The team's going to play hard. We're probably going to win a few games. I don't want there to be a question at the end of the season. I want to get this out publicly that Belichick is gone, and I think that seems very likely, especially once you see Curran coming out after Belichick left on Thursday saying, it's going to be Gerard Mayo, because all of us are sitting here thinking, well, Mike Vrabel's going to get an interview, right? Like, you have to interview Vrabel. He's he's potentially the best candidate available. Now, is he going to be the best coach relative to Gerard Mayo? I don't know. Maybe not. Obviously, the Patriots have a lot of faith in Mayo. Very smart guy. Only 37 years old. Has a bright future ahead of him. And if you want him locked up long-term as the head coach, you elevate him right now, even if it is a bit more premature than you intended um, expecting Belichick to coach another season. That rubs me the wrong way a little bit, right? Like, I, I, Mayo didn't have to do that, if that is in case what happened. Um, and then you had a report coming out from Greg Bedard uh, before the last last game of the season saying that Gerard Mayo is rubbing people the, long, the wrong way in the coaching staff at one Patriot place. Uh, who knows who leaked that? Could it have been Belichick because he saw this coming and he wanted to still have a shot? He wanted to convince Kraft to stay. I think it's pretty clear Belichick did want to stay. The way the way he was acting on on Black Monday, um, saying, "Hey, it's business as usual. I'm going to do the, the the formal exit interviews with all the players, and uh, we're going to start planning for next off season. I'm going to meet with Robert. I'm still under contract, by the way." Uh, Bill, with the little bit of leverage that he had, came out and said that. Uh, so somebody had to have leaked to Greg Bedard that uh, Gerard Mayo may be rubbing people, people the wrong way as kind of a last-ditch effort to either keep Belichick or not hire Gerard Mayo as the next head coach. It did not have to play out this way. And look, we're, we're going to start from zero now. Mayo's the head coach going forward. We're going we're gonna to 
you know, uh, give him the best good faith we possibly can, that he's going to do a great job, that he's going to do what's best for the organization. I think the bi- the much bigger factor isn't even necessarily the head coach. It's who they hire as GM. I really liked Adam Peters, but we found out minutes ago that he's going to go to the Washington Commanders, so he's off the table. There is Trey Brown in Cincinnati, who I guess has a good relationship with Mayo. He seems like an obvious choice, but maybe they want to promote from within. Uh, maybe they want to bring in Ziegler from from the Raiders, who was recently fired under Josh McDaniels. Didn't really get a fair shake. I mean, he brought in Devontae Adams. He made a lot of a lot of big moves there. Maybe he has a shot. Uh, but you know Gerard Mayo, because he's already the head coach less than 24 hours after Belichick left, he will likely be a part of the, that interview process and uh, will have to sign off on who the next GM is uh, alongside Robert Kraft. But uh, it's really sad to see it end this way, seeing the New York Jets defeat the Patriots, doing snow angels in our end zone, seeing Belichick kind of have to go through the formality of of a press conference like that. I think it was handled the best way. You don't want Belichick taking questions in that situation. Belichick really issued a statement that did feel at least somewhat authentic. It was heartfelt a little bit. There were authentic moments. He choked up a little bit when he was talking about the fans. He was very respectful to Robert, um, to the coaching staff, to the players, reflected on his 24 years in New England. I thought that was handled perfectly. I know it seemed like a quick exit, and maybe that was not satisfying with all bills done, but you know deep down Belichick just wanted to leave, right? (laughs) He wanted Robert Kraft to issue a statement via text right like like he did last year via a press release and and just walk out the door but Belichick obviously made a compromise with Robert Kraft because that was very important to Kraft who wants to come off as the benevolent Patriots owner and uh, um, end things well so eventually Belichick can come back to New England when he's done coaching get his red jacket be celebrated and we don't have a bad fallout like we did with with Pete Carroll or like we did with Bill Parcells, who Robert Kraft um, inherited. But didn't need to end this way. If Gerard Mayo did, in fact, leak that information to Tom Curran, maybe that was the final nail in the coffin. Maybe that was his incentive for doing so. But it sounds like this was the plan all along, and it really didn't need to go that way. I really hope that is not what happened. Um, If you're watching on YouTube, let me know in the comments below if you think that is how it happened. And would you have liked to see a real formal head coaching search? Would you have liked to at least, even if you liked Mayo and you think he would be the next great head coach, which he was probably second or third on my list personally. I liked B Enemy, I liked Vrabel, um, and then I probably liked Mayo just because of his inexperience. But Mayo obviously has the most upside being as young as he is. But Patriots, I would have liked them to at least get some input from the outside. Hiring from within especially in places like in college football. Yeah, it's worked out with people like Ed Orgeron and, 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 and others. But for the most part, you want to get the best coach available. But, but you know, uh, universities and NFL organizations have a loyalty and they want continuity and they want to hire within. And all those things are very important to Robert Kraft, um, which is why. And he, he had his sights set on Gerard Mayo, obviously, as early as last offseason. Uh, I feel bad for Vrabel because it almost seems like Vrabel pushed his his way out, purposely got himself fired because he at least had a shot at the Patriots head coaching position, and he didn't even get an interview. Like, that's a little bit heartbreaking to Vrabel. Vrabel probably will get a job somewhere else just because people think so highly of him. Uh, we'll see where that is, but now he's competing against Belichick. He's competing against other candidates could be competing against Nick Sirianni if the Eagles lose um, this weekend in their playoff game against Tampa. But didn't need to end this way, right? Uh, But very happy for Gerard Mayo. Um, Early predictions, I think he's going to be a great head coach. There's going to be growing pains. Uh, Defensively, he's going to bring back a lot of guys. You saw Mac Wilson Sr. on X saying that Oh, well, bring me back, please. I love Mayo. Bring me back. Um, The defense is going to probably continue to play at an elite level just because of how hands-on Mayo has been there. Um, I'm not sure Steve Belichick's going to stay. I would like to see him stay, but that would be a little bit weird. He'll probably go with Bill. Um, But really what's most important is figuring out the GM position and then figuring out what you do on the offensive side of the football where... uh, the Patriots had their biggest weaknesses. You got to figure out the quarterback position. Uh, 
in either whether that's in the draft with probably not Caleb Williams, but Jake Drake May or Jaden Daniels, or you bring in a Kirk Cousins, a Russell Wilson, uh, Baker Mayfield, probably not. He'll probably stay in Tampa, or you trade for a Justin Fields or something with Caleb Williams liking, likely going to Chicago. You deal with that. But you got to figure out who's going to run that offense. Maybe you bring Josh McDaniels back. Maybe you give Bill O'Brien a little more power over personnel, uh, uh, coaching personnel on the, the offensive side of the football, which he did not get last year under Belichick. Um, but uh, there's a lot that still needs to be sorted out. And look, I, I think for continuity purposes, the defense is going to be great with Gerard Mayo still there. But the biggest problem is how you deal with the offense. And that starts with Robert Kraft, the GM, and who you're ultimately going to bring in, whether it's McDaniels or somebody else. Maybe you can get Eric Bieniemy as the offensive coordinator. That'd be amazing, right? I wanted him to be the head coach. Maybe he stay, Maybe he comes in, runs the offense, modernizes it a little bit, works with Gerard Mayo. I think that would be the best case scenario at this point, but um, probably Bill O'Brien stays. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Um, and if you're excited about Gerard Mayo going forward, if you would have liked to see Vrabel or somebody else get a shot, if you wish they had done a head coaching search, or if you think the Patriots handled this the right way, should they have waited at least a few days? It feels, feels like, you know, Bill Belichick's presence is still in the building. His aura is still there. He just left, and you're already elevating Mayo. Um, would have liked to see it play out a little bit different, but hey, this is where we are now. Uh, best of luck to Gerard Mayo. I'm excited to see what he does, um, especially being as young as he is. Now the youngest head coach in the NFL at 37 years old. He's actually still, Sean McVay's only a few months older than him. It's unbelievable how young McVay was when he was brought into LA, uh, but Mayo, similar circumstances. Uh, but let me know what you think, and uh, we'll be back here at Pat's Cast throughout the week, uh, throughout next week, and, and maybe even this weekend if we get more breaking news coming out of one Patriot place. It's going to be interesting.